The Rings of Power just made a major throwback to Mithril and Silmaril lore from J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings, but it's also possible that this was part of Sauron's grand plan. Celebrimbor and Gil-galad believe that Mithril is the product of a Balrog and an elf fighting over a Silmaril, which is the key to bring back elven power to Middle-earth. This raises some big questions, so let's get into it. Starting off, Gil-galad's Mithril origin story might not be true. In the episode 5 titled Partings, the Elrond gets questioned by the elven high king Gil-galad about the Song of the Roots of Hithiglir, which he describes as some obscure legend generally thought to be apocryphal. In the legend, a fight breaks out between an elven warrior and a Balrog over a tree that's thought to hold the last of the lost Silmarils. The conflict results in the intermingling of their light and evil power, and the tree gets struck by lightning, sending the power deep down the mountain where it created them. If Elrond's initial facial expression isn't telling enough, the story itself seems to be similar to a comic book origin story more than any of the other tales we've seen in the Rings of Power so far. Gilgalad and Celebrimbor are worried about the fading light of the Eldar, and they're desperate to find a solution and think that bathing every elf in Mithril's light will restore the elves to their glory. Looking at this, it seems like they might be a little more open-minded than Elrond to legends like the Song of the Roots of Hithiglir. Still, you can't deny the fact that the story and the solution about the Mithrils both may be a little too convenient and contrived to be accepted as fact just yet. Moving on, Sauron is probably influencing Celebrimbor Brimbor. After being defeated by Morgoth, Sauron starts to reappear in Middle-earth around the year 500 of the Second Age. But the realm of Aragon was itself found after that during SA 750, indicating that the great foe is already active. Well, this isn't the same Sauron that everyone fears. Still, he's already directing plans and affecting many events for his grand return. During SA 1200, he tried to enter the elvish capital Linden, the seat of the King Gilgalad, but he disguised himself under an elvish form and operated under the name of Anatar, pretending to be a messenger from Valar and to come bringing gifts. The king doesn't buy it and tells him to go. He then goes to Erigion where Celebrimbor welcomes him and they start working on building the Rings of Power. Under the leadership and guidance from Anatar and Celebrimbor, the elven smiths reached the pinnacle of their abilities and powers as craftsmen by the year 1500 SA. And two centuries later, he'll eventually give up on his fair elvish appearance and reveal himself to Middle-earth. His forces invade Aragon in SA 1695 and encircle the Elven Kingdom. He takes Celebrimbor hostage two years later, who passes away in his torment. Sharing the timeline here is really important, as the show hasn't provided one, so we still don't know when in the Second Age they actually are. But by looking at the current situation, the Rings of Power would be somewhere around the SA 1200, though not yet close to the SA 1500. This shows Sauron is very much present in Middle-earth, and he might have already contacted contacted Celebrimbor. Yes, you heard that right. In fact, he may already be there in the show's beginning. Following that, here's how the elves' mithril plan is probably one of Sauron's deceptions. Since the beginning of the show, Gilgalad and Celebrimbor have been keeping Elrond in the dark about the complete truth. The thing is, Elrond was brought in because of his relationship with the dwarves, not just to help create an alliance in the construction of Celebrimbor's furnaces and tower, but also to set up access to the dwarves' mithril, so it wouldn't come as much of a surprise that Sauron's already approached Gilgalad and Celebrimbor under the guise of Anatar to plant the idea of working with the dwarves to build great furnaces to form something of true power as Elrond doesn't know the full truth. And the fact that the elves have literally existed for many millennia, it'd make perfect sense that the fading light of the Edar would be a horrifying mystery to them, giving Anatar the perfect tool. By weaponizing Gilgalad's hope, Sauron could have told him to build great furnaces that it'd be important for making rings of power under the guise of using them to make artifacts from the mithril to bathe the elves in the great light of the Valar once again. Luckily, two of the three rings that Celebrimbor created possess preservation powers, so Galadriel will be able to maintain the glory of the elves and the Lothlorien, and no matter what goes down with the mithril scheme, Sauron could use the same hope to get the elves to make rings of powers by teaching them how to do so. Last but not the least, this plot can cause tensions between dwarves and elves. Although Sauron Sauron does provide them with the means to form the Rings of Power, this plot could create a rift between elves and dwarves, who would definitely be a powerful alliance against Sauron, and the fact that the construction of the Forges of Aragon coincides with Adar's transformation of the Southlands into Mordor, which includes potentially making Mount Doom an active volcano, which Sauron needs to forge one ring in. 
With just two episodes left in the first season, his identity still remains a mystery, and the machinations propelling the rest of the plot forward must be his doing. There's plenty of time for his whole scheme to come into view, but for the time being, men, dwarves, and elves are all laying the foundation for his eventual domination. Let's take a look at other interesting news. First off, Rings of Power showrunner says that second season may take years to complete. It looks like the second season of Amazon's hit series may take a couple of years to arrive, even though they've been speeding up the production process. Patrick McKay and J.D. Payne aren't only writing the show, but acting as showrunners as well. The first season of the series premiered on September 1st this year, although it was announced back in 2017. The production started back in 2019, but had to be halted due to COVID-19. Finally, they wrapped the filming in mid-2021, and the show made its debut a year later. The show's finale is nearing, so for those already anticipating the next season, Patrick thinks that it may take another couple of years to complete. There's no doubt that the production speed will be quicker than the first season, as they already have the sets and base to work with. Still, a show of such epic scale will take some time to create. The first season has already set the bar high with the record-breaking viewership, so the next one shouldn't only maintain it, but expand it as well. This means that the designers and writers will have to put extra care into creating the next season, despite the reports that Amazon wants them to speed up the production process. We know this sounds disappointing, but it's for the best. Amazon has reportedly spent over $700 million on the series, so if a rushed season fails to live up to the expectation, they'll lose a lot of money. Up next, the Rings of Power season finale teases the next steps for the characters. Yes, the first season's finale is already upon us. Although the trailer for the final episode doesn't spoil much, it teases the next steps for the major players in the game. Elrond can be seen clutching to Mithril following his exit from Kazakh Doom, with the valuable material and the proof of its healing abilities. Besides this, Galadriel is forging her own route while riding a horse and perhaps assisting Halbrand in returning to capital Linden while he's still recovering. Back across the seas, Elendil and Muriel sail back to Numenor. In one scene, even the mysterious figures in white cloaks get a new direction as they appear to seize control over Nori, the Harfoot's eyes changing shape to match the towering blonde magic user. But there's a notable absence from Adar as well as Halbrand, which further fuels the theory that he's secretly Sauron. Finally, Morphid Clark has exposure therapy on the show to stop her from looking frightened. Most of the fans remember her from Saint Maud, where she played the character of a traumatized nurse in a mental health facility. Now, for portraying the warrior Galadriel, she's swapped the scrubs for swords on the Rings of Power. But the fact that she spent years playing scared to scarred characters, she needs to adjust to the demands of action sequences on the show. Recently, she said in an interview with Empire that in order to get rid of her frightened expressions, the stunt team made her go through particular training because she'd literally flinch when people would come at her. So they had strong men running and screaming towards her to stop her from looking frightened. Now that's strange, but we're glad that it worked out for them. That's a wrap for this video. What's your favorite episode from the Rings of Power so far? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more amazing and exciting videos. See you in the next one.